way, come again another day. Well, the rain out in today's World Series Game 3 sure seems to help help the Phillies in this situation. Instead of having a bullpen game with Noah Syndergaard starting tonight, it's going to set up for um, Noah to come back a little early. Brett? Yeah, but last time Nola pitched against us, let me check my notes. Um, the Phillies lost. And Ranger Suarez, last time he faced us, um, three innings, six hits, three home runs. Not concerned a bit. Oh, in the Phillies crowd, <laughs> Justin Verlander had some gestures for you, and we'll talk about this on tonight's postponed World Series Locked On Edition. Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, when you're not doing the rain dance, where can they find you on Twitter? Well, they can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, positive. I'm not worried about a postponement. Always Stros. All right, so I actually tweeted out that this actually helps the Phillies and it gives them the advantage. And some Phillies fan reached out and said, well, you should have just come, called yourself a dimwit. No, actually, everybody's saying that. The Athletic is saying it. The Houston Chronicle is saying it. Everybody's saying that this is be- very beneficial for the Houston, for the Phillies. Not only are you taking away Game 3, which was a bullpen game, you're giving it to Ranger Suarez, but you're also um, putting Aaron Nola in for game four. So this is a good situation for Phillies, and they are going to hold back on Wheeler. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first l- listen every day. Whether it's Dimwet Eric or Dimwet Brett doing a show, we always have a fun <laughs> time doing it. And uh, so just make sure you uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, and make sure you make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you check out your podcasts. Make the Locked on Astros podcast your first listen. So I wasn't totally surprised with this whole situation. I mean, we heard the reports all day. We heard Dusty Baker talking about, well, we're going to hear about what's going to happen around 6 o'clock. And when Rob Manfred came out and said, well, uh, it looks like we're going to go ahead and postpone the game. And this is the schedule. He made a funny comment about the Houston Texans game. Do you want to go ahead and discuss what he said? Oh, you're talking about how basically Rob Manfred said, you know, well, basically prime time is when we get the most views. So we're not moving it out of prime time. And I mean, I'm sorry, Texans fans. The Texans are fighting for a number one draft pick. They're going to lose anyways. And this is for all the marbles. This is the whole kit and caboodle. This is everything. This is the holy grail of holy grails. So of course the World Series, especially with the storylines now, is going is going to be played in a prime time spot. And someone goes, I guess this ruins H Town's chances for Game Six. It does not ruin my chances for Game Six. It actually cements them and solidifies them. It means I don't have to take off school that day. Yeah. So Rob Manfred actually came out and he was like, "Well, we considered making it an afternoon game, but upon careful consideration, we decided that we needed a prime time. In other words." Nobody's watching the Texans game. Everybody will be watching the Astros World Series game, especially in H-Town, because we are a big baseball city right now. The Texans are not a great team. That game on Sunday was pathetic. The Rockets, they they have potential, but they're, they still haven't hit their stride yet. The Astros are the best ticket in Houston right now and in baseball. So, yeah, of course you're going to put them in primetime, Rob Manfred. So it was just a kind of a silly comment. Well, we thought about moving aside for the Texans game, but uh, that's just kind of weird. But overall, I'm not worried about this. No, I'm not really worried about uh, Nola pitching earlier. I'm really not. The Astros put five runs on him. Yes, he settled down, but I don't care. They show that he is susceptible. This isn't the same Nola that pitched in the regular season versus the Astros. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, 
the Astros aren't worried about it. You know, um, you know, something funny that happened. The, the Astros bus pulled up um, to the stadium, Eric, and had a busted window. But come to find out, the window was already busted. I want to know who's renting buses for the Astros with busted windows. That's my first question. My second thing is when I saw Justin Verlander flip the bird to the Phillies fans, it's all in good fun. And, you know, I know that the Phillies fans are going to bring it, and I know they're going to bring the noise. But whether it's Syndergaard, Suarez, Nola, Wheeler, I don't care who it is, Eric. I honestly think that this Astros team, when you listen to the interviews of the players, when you listen to Lance McCullers, who says, I thrive in playing on the road. I thrive in the brutal conditions. I, I enjoy it. When Alex Bregman and his son Knox is in the building, I love that. His wife actually gave him that name, and he said, yeah, and that actually leads to baseball because they said when you get Knox on the field, you get to go home and see Knox at home. And so Alex Bregman said, yeah, it kind of worked out to be a baseball name, but he said his wife had everything to do with that. You've got the third baseman that's first or second in every postseason offensive category. You've got Jose Altuve, who is finding his stroke. Jordan Alvarez, who's who knows what, what he's going to do in this ballpark going to right field. And I just think Chaz McCormick, um, I still like our chances, Eric. Now, does does it add a little bit more of a favorable, um, you know, tinge to the Phillies? Of course it does, because then you don't have to depend on center guard, and center guard's kind of a throw-in to get you to the next game. But this team has shown after game one, because that was a devastating loss, and a lot of teams would have folded after that. A lot of teams would have been done in. And they came back and fought with the amount of fortitude that they needed. And even though they only scored four runs because of this pitching staff, I mean five runs, this pitching staff held the other team at bay and won five to two. So – I'm still excited about game three. I'm just bummed that we didn't get to watch baseball tonight. That's the only reason why I'm upset. There's no conspiracy theory. There's no Rob Manford trying to help the Phillies. There's no there's no MLB trying to trying to keep the Astros from a title. That's just not a thing. Like, like that's complete conspiracy. Don't go around that tagline because it makes you not look so smart. Yeah, and uh, Brian McTaggart tweeted out later. He said, guys, it's pouring down rain in Philadelphia, so the postponement appears to be a wise move. So before the postponement, Dusty Baker said that if the game gets postponed, they were considering having Justin Verlander go in game four. But a caveat was the fact that they thought that the extra day of rest would be good for Justin Verlander. So after the postponement, he did confirm that it will still be Lance McCullers in game three. Game four will probably, there it goes again, probably be Christian Javier. <laughs> and why can't you just come out and say Christian Javier? But, um, and then he said that, um, like, I mean, he didn't really come out and say it, but that sets up game five, Justin Verlander on a little bit of one day extra rest. So I think that's a good move for Houston. He struggled in his last game. Give him the extra day to kind of uh, discover his touch and see what happens. So what the Phillies are doing on the opposite side is Aaron Nola is going to go ahead and pitch game three. Sorry, sorry, rewind. Ranger Suarez is going to pitch game three. Then Nola is going to pitch game four. And then they're going to go with Syndergaard for game five. And they're going to save Wheeler for game six. Because if you didn't notice in uh, game two, Wheeler's velocity was down and they – they said he's um, Thompson said he's OK. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just a little bit tired from a long season. And so they want to give him the extra day rest. That's why they didn't go ahead and move him up. Yes, that's probably an excuse as to why he gave up five runs <laughs> five from the Phillies. But it still. wasn't the Astros white pants or the roof being closed. It wasn't anything like that. Um, you know, Eric, I have a question. Let's say the Astros win game three and four. Does Rob Thompson now have a move to make to force? Yeah. Is he forced to go Wheeler game five? Yeah, I would say so. And then I if he goes, their hands. And, and then if he goes Wheeler game five, you have Nola that just pitched in game three or game four, and we're assuming that they get the loss. They come back to Houston with Syndergaard going. They have no Wheeler, no Nola. They have Ranger Suarez. You know, I really like us winning two. And clinching at home. I, I really like that. See, 
we got to be always positive, always Strohs here. And like Jay says, all the pressure is on Nola because now Nola stumbled, okay? Now he's got to perform at home. I'm still anticipating this game because of this, Eric, because both teams have a perfect record in their situation. The Astros haven't lost a game on the road. The Phillies haven't lost a game at home. And if you're going to bet on this game, if you saw the odds today, I think the Astros are like plus 150 something and the Phillies are like minus 116. I'll have to give you the exact numbers. Go to my Twitter. I'll retweet it later on. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all betting football. I mean, Eagles and Texans, that sounds like a real barn burner. Not. And the start of the new basketball season. The Rockets are not great, but they are fun to watch. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always... Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check out all your favorite sports games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, speaking of betting, I think if you look prior to the series, I think the Astros were heavily favored, but after losing game one, they went, they, the kind of numbers went down a little bit, but um, I think if you look after this postponement today, the Vegas Lions are still have the Astros as the favorite, but I think that, um, I, I think that they're thinking that Nola and pitching in game four is better than having the other situation. So I think not only the pitching staff, the starting pitchers, but this will benefit the bullpen because the bullpen was used a lot. And uh, I can count on my fingers how many reliable relievers the if you're talking about the high leverage relievers the Phillies have. And it's probably three if you're talking now, about their key relievers. Now, now, speaking of relievers, because this is something I was thinking about today, Eric, that I was like, you know what? I want to get Eric's thoughts on this. Rafael Montero has been used a lot. I think eight out of nine games in the playoffs or eight out of what is it now? Uh 11 games. Uh, I've lost count. Okay. Um, Basically almost every game he's pitched. Abreu too. Okay. Abreu. He hasn't used Stanek, but twice. Like at, at what point in the world series do you use a pitcher too much where hitters start to pick up on tendencies and you hide a guy so much that when he gets in there, maybe he's not as effective because he's a little cold. Do you think, I mean, that's gotta be a concern, doesn't it? What do you think? Like your opinion, this is just, this is Eric's opinion. This isn't, I'm looking for right or wrong. I'm looking for Eric's objective opinion here. Do you think he's overusing Montero at the danger of possibly getting them getting used to what he's throwing and hiding Stanek? Or do you think that's to their advantage towards the end of the series? Hey, Dusty Baker, are you ever going to have David Hensley play DH? Well, you have to wait and see. I think the same situation is for Stanek. I mean, he, this was what you probably your best reliever all season long. He had the best ERA, but according to if if let's just say that this is Dusty Baker's matchup sheet. According to the matchup sheets, the numbers aren't favoring Stanek coming in okay. when he needs to come in, and so we've seen Dusty Baker go by the numbers, paint by the numbers, and uh, that's how he likes to manage. So I think that we'll probably see, especially with three games in a row, back-to-back days, the off day on Friday will help um, both bullpens. But I think you're not going to see Montero in every game. You're not going to see Abreu in every game. They're definitely not going to try to extend Abreu like uh, he tried to do in game one or two. I forget which one it was. But I think you're going to see Stanek a lot more, especially with back-to-back-to-back games in Philadelphia. Yeah. And, you know, David Hensley was announced for game three already. So he yeah. is going to be the DH going in. He was just, that was Eric was, yeah, yeah, Eric, Eric was posing that question as if we were asking that beforehand, because that's what we were asking last night. Are you going to use David Hensley as DH? And I absolutely love it, Eric, because this kid has done nothing but do well with his opportunities. And I know this is a big stage. I know the lights are brighter, but you know, he's also almost so unseasoned and so, so green to this position that I think it might have the reverse effect where he actually responds to it. And sometimes you have that rookie naivety to your game to where you don't realize you're supposed to be like not good at the plate, that you're supposed to swing out of the zone. 
And I guarantee you, Hensley will go in there prepared. Their hitting coaches, Centrone and the crew, will have these guys ready to face Ranger Suarez. And look, we're not sneezing at the Phillies. We're not saying the Phillies aren't good competition. We're not discounting anything from the Phillies because we've been getting accused of discounting the Phillies and discounting the fans. What we're saying is our counterpunch this year in 2022 is the best counterpunch that any Houston team has ever offered. So I love our chances. I like three and four. I think they get game five. And I like the clinching game six. And I, I'm just going to stick to that until if if we go to game three and that and that changes, I think we get four and five. I just I don't see how we lose two out of three in Philadelphia. If I'm being real honest, I have that much faith in this team. David Hensley said it's hard to put into words. It's exciting. And he said after the season, he'll probably have more time to really reflect on the situation going from the minor leagues to the World Series is a big thing. But right now, he's just trying to focus on being the best player I can be and ultimately try and help this team win a championship. And we've seen him already affect the playoffs. We've seen some key at-bats, especially in the Mariner season uh, series. And I think that this is what the Astros need at DH. Diaz was not cutting it. Mancini was not cutting it. You've got to make a change. You've got to be not afraid to make a change. David Hensley... Uh, doesn't have a lot of experience, grant, granted, but he does have a good abil- great ability to put the bat on the ball. And that's what the Astros need from their DH spot. So what's the worst that can happen? And I think Dusty Baker is finally realizing this. And he did confirm that despite the change in pitching plans for the Phillies, that David Hensley will be still in the lineup for Game 3. Yeah, and when you look at the pitching situation, when you look at the veterans, the rookies like the Hunter Browns, guys like that, Dusty's going to put them in the best situation and in the best circumstance to succeed. And David Hensley has been around these major leaguers for quite some time, Eric. He's also been around the guys that have come down. He spent time with them. I mean, you and I have been to Constellation Field. We've, we've talked to the players. We've, we've talked to those that are in charge of that AAA program. We've talked to guys throughout the entire system. And they all say the same thing. The amount of preparation and the amount of preparedness that these guys have when they get to the big leagues is absolutely massive. I, I'm really anxious to see what kind of player David Hensley turns into. And, you know, Chaz McCormick, Eric, you can't you can't just discount these two guys going into 2023 because Chaz McCormick has taken every opportunity and he's succeeded. He's one of our most dangerous hitters in this lineup in the postseason. And it just goes to show something when you have Alex Bregman who has a bounce back postseason from last year. He's basically playing with one hand. Literally, he could have tied one hand behind his back and he would have been doing the same thing. And then this year, he's got breaming confidence. You got Altuve coming back. You got Hensley, who's a rookie. And really, this is the time. This he is the antithesis. He is he is the cog in the wheel that the Phillies didn't expect to be there. So there are some unexpected things that will come the Phillies' way, and I think for the Astros, they're set up very nicely. I still like where they are. I think the extra day of rest, if you're going to keep using those relievers, you know what? You just gave them rest, and you know what? You just lease this game to our relief bullpen. All you got to do is take it to the sixth inning. But I want to ask you this. Christian Javier, what would a Christian Javier game three versus a Lance McCullers game four look like would Christian Javier be more of a guaranteed shutdown pitcher and then give McCullers an extra day rest or because of this rest you're fully confident with McCullers going no uh Dusty Baker said that he is the big game pitcher he's the guy you want if you're going to have somebody pitch a game seven potential game seven you want Lance McCullers on the mound because he's done it before he's pitched in those situations so you want that guy on the mound and Christian Javier he's great He's, he's one of the best strikeout pitchers in the league. But in this situation, with the hostile crowd, game one of the World Series at their home ballpark, you want somebody who's cold-blooded out there. That's Lance McCullers. And, yes, he didn't do so well at Yankee Stadium, but I think there were some other issues in that situation, the rain delay, everything like that. So I think that uh, t- tomorrow's game is a big key, game three. And here's why. The team that um, the home team, after splitting the first two games, have gone on to win the World Series 47 of 86 times, which is 55%. So the Astros have split the first two games. Now, in the best of seven series, 
the winner of the third game has gone on to win the World Series 68, or maybe not the World Series, but one uh, win the series in general because it's a DS, I mean, uh, CS as well. Um, 68 of 98 times for 69%. So game three is going to be key for the Houston Astros. If they can go in to uh, Citizen Bank Park, shut down the Phillies, that's a good way to kind of put your mark on the rest of the series. Exactly. And like Brian McTaggart said earlier in a tweet, tomorrow when Lance McCuller starts will be the anniversary of his game seven heroics in the 2017 2017. World Series where we clinched and won in L.A. So how fitting and how I propose to have him start on the anniversary. And I don't think things like that align just by accident. I think there's a purpose and a reason. And I know people have talked about the Phillies are a team of destiny. But this Astros team, what they've been through. Now, granted, again, because people are going to accuse me of saying that I overshadowed 17. They put themselves in certain situations. But the amount of hard work that they put in, they've lost Springer. They lost Cole. They lost Keuchel. They lost these big players on their team. And they just kept steamrolling. I mean, they were developing Alvarez in 17, and look what he's become. It is just amazing. Now, a little caveat, because I mentioned Springer. I wanted to share this with you. I won't say who it is, but a good friend of mine sent me a text today. Um, he's into working out and stuff. He used to be a former professional bodybuilder. He spent last night, or the night before, I guess Saturday night, watching the World Series with George Springer and his wife and family at, at their house literally watched the World Series with them. And he said, George Springer was calling every pitch. And I'm like, what? So I don't I don't know where he went. I don't know if George still has a house down here, but I thought that was really cool that he got to spin the World Series. And he said, it was like listening to Tony Romo call a football game. He said, George was like, okay, this is going to be this pitch. This is going to be that pitch. And, um, and then I took a stroll down memory lane, Eric, in 2019, when all the HEB commercials, I was getting a little teary eyed with seeing the Correa and the Springer and the Altuve commercials. They're all together uh, in Bregman. That was just, those were great times, but as great as those times were, and the reason why I mentioned this, this team, I think is even better. Jeremy Pena has cemented himself in Astros lure in as, as, a, as a legend in the playoffs and, Gosh, Alex Bregman, I, I can't say enough about how happy I am that he's performed the way he is. Yeah, so I'm about to, a lot of people are in chat are talking about Christian Javier versus Lance McCullers. It is a good yeah. debate, but Dusty Baker has already made his decision because um, McCullers is a big game pitcher, but this is what he had to say. So um, he said Javier has been really good, and so that's why they went with him game four. And also he said we wanted to give uh, Justin Verlander the extra day rest. And then also about um, this is what Josh Miller had to say about Christian Javier. He said, Javier's so unique in his way, but it's definitely an advantage. Their hitters have not seen him stuff. His stuff come from the unique delivery and the high quality pitch combination that he has. So it should be Javier's advantage when he does take the mound. And I'll expect him to do very well as well. So he does have the invisible fastball, the sweeping slider, and he probably has the best overall stuff on the on the uh, staff that's saying something because from Valdez is pretty good <laughs> Justin Verlander when he's got his a game on he's pretty good Lance McCullers when he's got his a game on he's pretty good that shows how good this Astros team is they don't have to skip somebody like the Phillies are doing the Astros are deep and we like somebody said in chat earlier we have not even seen Jose Ur- Urquidy in this playoffs exactly that that's true I and mean, we haven't seen him at all so I wonder how how smart it would be to pitch him unless you have like a giant lead. I I, I wouldn't put him in there unless you have five or six run lead. Let's say six run lead because five run leads aren't aren't safe with this Phillies team. James asks Brett, is there still going to be a day between um, a day off between games five and six? No, it's going to be a day off. No, actually, yes, I'm yes, sorry. Game it's game Friday. Game, it's be. Yeah, game five will be Thursday. I was thinking he was saying saying six and seven. So Friday is the off day. So Saturday is game six, if necessary. Sunday is game seven, if necessary. Right. So, so they, they moved the whole series have, back, yeah. Yeah, they moved everything back. It's okay. Who knows? We may not need six or seven games. The Astros may take care of business in Philly. 
but I do agree with the comment here a second ago. Um, a loss by the Phillies in Game Three, I think, would be devastating for them. Uh, I'm not saying they're dead. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not putting them in the ground, but that's going to be a really difficult thing to come back because all the hype and all the stock that they put in their fan base and how this fan base was going to fuel Bryce and how Bryce's home runs are going to fuel this. You realize how much they have limited the home runs for mm-hmm. the for the Astros? I don't know if you have those numbers. I actually posted them earlier. Did you see the tweet that I put up there or do you have them on the stat sheet? No. Um I will I will share them real quick with us um here on the show. Uh <laughs> I had it I tweeted so many things today because I was, All right. While you're trying you to find, ahead, it, I'll find yeah. it, you go ahead. All right. So uh, McCullers in his um, history with the Astros, he's two and two with a 2.77 ERA and a 110 whip and 18 career games in postseason. He has 11 playoff starts and 68 and one third innings and the second most in franchise history behind Verlander's 17 playoff starts and 104 and one third innings. So McCullers did face the Phillies in his last regular season start, six innings. He allowed one home run to Kyle Schwarber. He looked pretty good. Uh, Ranger Suarez on the opposite side, uh, three Astros hit a home run against him. Uh, Of course, you have the usual suspects, Jeremy Pena, Kyle Tucker. But then you have some dude named Martin Maldonado. He homered against him as well. So the Astros batted 429 against him with a 1478 OPS in a, in that one game versus in, in the regular season. But he's pitched against the Astros a couple times in the playoffs, and he's looked pretty good. Um, I know it's been small sample sizes, but overall in the playoffs, he has a 1.86 ERA with nine strikeouts and 9.2 innings pitch. Okay, so here it is. Homer happy. This is per Astros. The Astros have homered in all nine games this postseason, combining to hit 15 long balls among six players, including three apiece by Alex Bregman, Jeremy Pena, and Kyle Tucker. The Astros pitching staff has allowed just six homers this postseason, all solo shots. That is the difference. We talked about coming into this into this series, and you and I respected the Phillies, right? We mm-hmm. respected Bryce Harper. We gave him his due. We respected Kyle Schwarber. We talked about Alec Baum. We talked about JT Real Muto. We talked about these players that are hitting, but the perfect counterpunch to a hot offense who, de- who I think depends too heavily on home runs we have exposed a weakness. And that's not any, I haven't heard a single media person talk about that. We have exposed a weakness that they have. You counter their home runs with great pitching. You keep them in the ballpark. They don't win. That's the bottom line. And they did steal that game one. That game should have never been lost by the Astros. They should be up 2-0, but the pass is in the past. I love our pitching staff. Literally, when I saw that, I didn't realize that all six home runs that we'd given up were solo shots. Solo home runs don't typically beat you in the long run. I absolutely think that's a great statistic for a for stat for us to hold on to going into game three. All right. So David asks, uh, Urquidy is in uh, 3-0 in the World Series, not like Verlander's own six. So should Urquidy get the game five start? So here's the problem with Urquidy getting a start at this point. You know, he's he hasn't pitched since October 3rd. Tomorrow will be November 1st. So it's been a while since he pitched. And even then, he threw two innings. He threw 44 pitches, allowed two home runs in that game. Uh, so this guy, as good as he's been in the postseason in the past, he's not built up like he's been in the past. He has not been used. Dusty Baker has not felt the right situation. He's the stanic of the rotation bullpen. And so it's just, he hasn't found the right spot for him yet. So how are you going to start Urquidy over somebody who's going to win a Cy Young this year? So, no, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but still. Yeah, I, I agree with you, you wholeheartedly. That's that's not going to happen. Urquidy's not going to get a start this late into the postseason if he hasn't started. I think the only way you use Urquidy is if you're up by several runs, and if you're up by several runs, you don't want to use a bullpen arm. You can put Urquidy in there, let him get in a groove, let him throw a couple innings, 
maybe in game three or four, but it has to be the right situation. And it's not because I don't think Urquidy can do it. It's just like you said, he hasn't pitched in such a long time, which makes it odd why they put him on this staff. I know they put him on here pretty much because he earned his spot. He didn't have a bad season. And it's not a knock on Urquidy at all. It's just that we have a surplus. And so what I love about this team is even though, you know, Jose Urquidy wants to be in there, Eric, he mm-hmm. is a team player. Yeah. And he does care more about the results than him being actually being a part. I hate to say this, but Jose or Katie is a mop up option at this point. If the Astro, if the lead gets out of control for the Houston Astros, we're going to see Jose or Kitty because he has not pitched in almost a month. You're not going to bring him in in a key situation. So, um, Hun always ask, uh, is asking, uh, who's Javier or JV in game four, uh, who would we start? I would still go to Javier in game four. I, would I, I think that he is the Astros. If he was on any other team, he may be the ace of that team. That's just how good he's been. And I think I like the fact that despite when everybody got healthy in a rotation, they left him in. They could have easily put him in the bullpen, made him a long guy. But you have Hunter Brown, and we haven't even seen Hunter Brown that much. We saw him in game one, but we haven't really seen him. I know it's only been two games. It just feels like it's been longer in this World Series. But well, um, I, I think that what we're um, – I think that Javier deserves to get a start in the World Series. Oh, yeah. Give Justin Verlander that extra day of rest and watch out. I said this after the podcast to Brett. I'm like, when everybody was complaining about Verlander, watch him go out and throw away six innings, shutout innings the next year. Yeah. So, you know, um, this this pitching staff, we have chronicled it. We've kind of talked a little about a little bit about hitting here or there, but I don't know if our fans know this, so I want to share this with y'all. 99 and counting from the Astros. Jose Altuve now has 99 career postseason hits, and he's looking to become just the sixth player in Major League history to reach 100. He sits behind Yadier Molina with 102, Jorge Posado 103, Manny Ramirez 117, Bernie Williams 128, and Derek Jeter 200. 200. He's 100 hits behind Derek Jeter. I know Derek Jeter gets a lot of crap, and I know he's a Yankee, but he was a postseason guy. He did postseason things, and that's why he's considered one of the greatest players of his generation. But Jose Altuve, I think next game, easily gets equal with Molina, or he can even pass him. I love seeing what he's doing. And again, Ryan Presley is nine for nine and save opportunities. 7.1 innings pitch, 10 strikeouts, converting all four of his save chances successfully. I rest my case, Judge. What is the verdict? Astros right. win. Thank you, sir. Um, Harry asks, are we going to see Will Smith in a close game or just a blowout or if we're winning big? Um, I think in the three games in Philly, we're going to see the entire bullpen. You're going to even see Jose or in the, in a certain situation, but cause you don't want to burn out your bullpen, especially you're not going to go a Brayu two innings in game three and then expect them to come back uh, for one inning in game four and one inning in game five. So they're going to have to be a little bit smarter with the bullpen usage. And I think we're going to see more static. I think we're going to see more of everything, but for some reason, the paper is not saying that Stanek is the right call. So Dusty Baker is going with this paper. I bet you would like to see what's on this paper, but that's to, uh, for <laughs> Dusty Baker to see. Wait, Eric Eric secretly had someone deliver his paper, yep. airmail from Dusty mm-hmm. Baker. Yes. Um, so I was going to say this earlier because I, I tease it at the beginning. Justin Verlander flipping off the Phillies fans as the bus drove in. They're yelling cheaters and all this stuff. He gets off the bus and he smiles and he flips on the bird. And you know what that reminded me of? And this is kind of a painful memory for Houston, but I remember it went well for the team that did it. When the Boston Celtics came to Houston um, in the 1986 NBA Finals, Larry Bird was quoted and was seen on camera flipping off Rockets fans more than once. Now, when Larry Bird did it, he was just being an a-hole. He he wasn't smiling. He wasn't laughing. I've actually talked to some Phillies fans today. They said, you know what? We love Justin Verlander. You know why? Because he gets it. And he gets us and he throws it back on our face and we actually love it. It's kind of just friendly banter, right? But when Larry Bird flipped the bird, they beat the Rockets. So I'm thinking that little signal right there, the X factor may be Justin Verlander's middle finger. (laughs) There you go. 
And um, I'm still sticking by 7-2 win in Game 3 uh, because I think that the Astros can't hit Suarez. I think that he will make some mistakes. with uh, When he was just pitching in a small sample, he was doing great. He was even getting Alvarez out. But I think when you, you see him multiple times, I think the Astros can figure him out. They're pretty good against left-handed pitching. So I'm not worried about Suarez. I'm not worried about Nola. I ain't worried about Syndergaard. I ain't worried about Wheeler, especially if his velocity is down. He did not look like the same. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I can Two, Three snaps in the Z formation. <laughs> I bring back yeah. a living color. Oh, my gosh. Those are great shows. If you grew up in the 90s, you know what I'm talking about. And, hey, I just want to say hello to our people from across the pond from England. Thank you all so much. And, dude, man, Papa, let me tell you, I'm so sorry that you had to take a nap and now you can't go to sleep. Because there's no game to watch. So you know what? Try to get a nap. Try to fall asleep to the telly in the background. Grab some tea in the morning. And then get ready for game three. Because the Astros are expecting you to be watching. We expect y'all to listen to us every day. And we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We're so close to our goal. We get to our goal for the year that we set. We're going to announce it. And I am personally going to make four shirts to give away to you guys from Locked on Astros to say thank you. And those will be exclusive items. There will be four of four, only four of them in existence. Eric and I may have one one each, but so there will be six total. But they're only going to give four to the public. And thank you all so much for making us. Dude, we're, we're back on the top ten, Eric. We're number eight on the charts. And it's not just because of what we do. It's because everybody takes time out of their day to listen to us. And we do our best to make things right, to get things right. And when we don't, we correct them. We're not perfect. We just absolutely have a passion for this team. And we have a passion to see the Astros win another World Series in 2022. And make sure when you're listening to Locked On Astros podcast, you get a spot to tie. Uh, so that's all we got for this edition. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us and make sure you go and uh, listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. And let's go out there and show Phillies fans. We ain't scared of no Philly fans. Boom, doom, doom. We ain't fans. Anyway. All right. Was we'll that, wait, was that, a Forrest, was that a Forrest Gump um, England accent? Because it kind of sounded like it. <laughs> I don't know. That's whatever. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Ghost Charles. <laughs>